when I stopped watching pornography and I started getting on this whole self-improvement journey, the reason why I kept going and I didn't just cut it off there, it was it was like I was using it to cover up something that was even bigger. And okay. the thing that I was covering up, just a lot of a lot of trauma from my childhood. What is the, what is their mindset? Like, I really want to get into the mind of an atheist. I really want to understand like what it's like to think like an atheist. Like, what is what is your life like when you are just living and really there's no higher authority over you? The thing that hit me the most is that science is two steps behind. Mm. Science is playing catch up. Everything that science is coming onto, it's already been there. Like when they figured out oxygen, did, did oxygen just appear out of nowhere? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So alhamdulillah, we have another person on YouTube that accepted Islam. I don't know what it is right now, alhamdulillah, but people are accepting Islam in droves and YouTubers are like Alhamdulillah A lot of YouTubers Big YouTubers as well And remember Our deen is not about numbers And it's not about How big you are But it's just interesting That Islam is reaching um, That which you might have Perceived as the unreachable So today we've got brother And I really want to make sure I pronounce his name correctly But brother Anhal An 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 Anihal Anyal We've got brother Anyal and uh, who accepted Islam Alhamdulillah I put up a video about two and a half weeks ago And many of you guys said Yo get the brother on a podcast And I can't lie Lovely brother I actually feel I actually feel emotional Just thinking of how lovely he is Like just that conversation that we had right now Was so nice I actually I feel like my eyes are swelling up I feel a little tingle in my nose You know when you get emotional Just cause You know you know, Islamic brotherhood is beautiful And we ain't even met We literally spoke for a computer screen But and like, I don't even if you know, you guys can see the way I'm sitting. I'm not even sitting the way I usually sit on a podcast. I'm just, I'm lounging right now because just by chatting to him, I felt like we were just sitting in my living room, just vibes in. And lovely guy, man. I can't lie. Alhamdulillah. So, he's, you know, we, we, we talked about his journey. We talked about atheism. We talked about Christianity. We talked about feminism. But the things we didn't talk, we didn't really go into it in like an academic way. We talked about it more from a spiritual angle. So if you are an atheist or a Christian, you might... Appreciate, especially in atheists, you might appreciate the spiritual element to the conversation, like looking at atheism through a spiritual lens, because um, uh, a lot of times we deal with these things in quite an intellectual way, and sometimes it can be a bit over people's heads. So the conversation was kind of cool. Uh, we talked about pornography, you know, his journey with overcoming pornography. While I was good, I can't lie. And you watch the video, peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, how are you guys doing today? Alhamdulillah, I've got the beautiful brother Anhal here with me right now, joining me. Uh, some of you have probably seen the brother, he accepted Islam. Literally, um, I think the video came about two, two and a half weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I've been I've been inundated with requests. People have been in my comments saying you have to get the brother on the podcast. People have been DMing me on Instagram. They say you have to get the brother. So alhamdulillah, due to popular demand, we've got you here. Akhi. How, how are you doing today, my bro? Doing good, brother. Well, like, you know, before we start off, I have to say one thing. Akhi. You know, you know, I listened to a couple of your videos. You know, you've got that, you've got that radio voice, Allah Mubarak. You know, that voice you can just listen to. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Has anyone ever told you that before? I've gotten it a few times, but it's weird when you hear your own voice, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, definitely, definitely, definitely. I like, I like the vibes. It's, it's like I'm sitting by the ocean, you know, I'm just saying, sipping some pineapple juice and just getting motivated. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, bro. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So, Akhi, inshallah, we'll just um, start off by uh, getting to know you a bit more, especially for some of the viewers who may not be familiar with you. You know what I'm saying? If you tell us a bit about what you do on YouTube, and obviously then we'll talk about, you know, your journey to Islam and, and some of the things that you're doing now, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, inshallah, on YouTube, all I do is pretty much share my self-improvement journey. And it's been an ongoing thing since like 2015. Mm -hmm. And you know, since I reverted, I figured, why, why would I not say that? Why mm -hmm. would I keep that hidden from people if that mm -hmm. is part of the journey? You know what I mean? Okay, wow, that's deep. So, so basically, you're you're just you're just journey maturing, growing, developing. You just been you've been sharing that with people. Yeah, pretty much, man. Pretty much ever since the okay. beginning. It's uh, it's crazy because it all started. Um, I actually had 
a bad issue with pornography and you know i was trying to find a way to get past it and i saw some people okay. on youtube and you know alhamdulillah they were sharing their experience and i was like wow like this is impacting me so much like maybe i could make a video i could make a channel where i'm sharing my experience and i could wow. you know i could potentially help someone who's also going through the same thing wow wow you know what since since, since we're on that point is there anything that you could share with people that might be listening because i know a lot of people that listen you know they they've got they've got similar issues with the issue of pornography like what, what advice would you give them right now from a um maybe from like a spiritual health kind of perspective from a psychological perspective, how they can maybe try to overcome it. I've made loads of videos on it from a spiritual perspective, you know what I'm saying? Showing them about, you know, fasting and everything. But sometimes it helps to know the science. Like, what is it scientifically, mechanically actually doing to you? Yeah, so scientifically speaking, when one watches pornography, it's um, there's too much dopamine being released into your system. And, you know, Allah made us perfectly. To where when we're with a woman, there's enough dopamine. It's natural, mm. right? But if you're on a computer and you have access to an unlimited amount of women, that's not natural. It's an overload of dopamine, basically. Yeah, there's an overload of dopamine. And what ends up happening is it, it basically gives you a high and then it drops you lower than what you were meant to be. And your body is always trying to go back to homeostasis. Nice. Like, yeah, well, no, okay. no, no. Your body has an even level. It's called homeostasis. Okay. And then okay. when you end up watching pornography, it, it makes you high. It brings you up here. Okay. And your body's like, all right, well, let me bring it back down. And, and because you were so high up, you don't actually go back to the normal levels. You actually go below normal levels. Okay. That's why people feel the way that they feel several days later if they don't watch it. Okay. Okay. So you and, and so like, like they feel like trash. They feel low. They they self hate. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, and okay. it's it's an ongoing cycle because you do it when you feel low, and then you feel high, and then it makes you feel low again, and then you go and do it again to make you go high. It's it's an addiction, bro. It's an addiction. Okay. okay. You know, I actually heard many years ago. I don't know how accurate it is, but I saw it in a documentary about drugs. And I hope I hope I'm gonna quote it correctly, but they were mentioning that pornography actually has more of an intense effect on your brain, neurologically speaking, than cocaine. Yeah. So 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 watching pornography will mash you will mash you up more than watching than, than sniffing cocaine. Pretty much, pretty much. And the the crazy yeah. thing is, is it's free. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that was it. That's the yeah. Cocaine is expensive. Yeah. And you could go jail for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So someone starts doing cocaine, yeah, they're going to become addicted, but there are blocks. There are like things that will hold them back to a certain mm. extent. With pornography, a little kid can go on on Google and find something. Mm. You know, God forbid that that happens, but that's how, that's the day we live in, man. You know, one of the things that shocks me about pornography is the fact that and I think maybe this has got something to do with the the whole hormonal element, the dopamine element. You know, how I said you, you you keeps going high, and then you know you, you always get, you know that unlimited amount, and then you're gonna keep pushing and getting more and more. Is the way that the genres of pornography have evolved. Like you know, what I'm saying before people would just you know you know it, they would just get excited seeing a person you know naked, but you know what I'm saying now they got rape genres. And then, you know, I heard they got like some kind of uh, disabled genre now. That's, yeah, that's guy terrible. Was, yeah, it's, it's got like a disabled genre. And it's like, you know what I'm saying? You want to see people that are like, you know, for example, they've got certain handicaps. It's, it's it's like a normal normal thing won't won't get a man excited anymore. You know what I'm saying? It just won't get a man excited. So he's got to push to these levels. And it's all mad. And it's interesting because the Prophet Ali Sam, he mentioned that, you know, when you do a sin, you get a stain on your heart. And every time you do a sin, you get an extra stain and an extra stain until the heart is completely stained and a person will not any longer be able to tell the difference between good and bad. You know what I'm saying? Like you present good to him and the good, he can't tell this is good for him. He thinks this is bad. And when you present bad, he can't realize the harm in it. He'll see it as good. And, you know, I think one of the greatest, quickest ways to just stain your heart, you know what I'm saying, is uh, 
is pornography, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's crazy. And it's just, you're going to forever push the levels. You're going to get to a point where, you, like, imagine a guy's watching a rape porn scene and that's bad. Like I'm saying, every, any level you should know is bad, but he doesn't, he, he can't, he can't see how harmful that is. Like mentally, you know what I'm saying? Emotionally, like just, just that's going to, and then, and then you're going to want to manifest those fantasies in real life. You know what I'm saying? Like, occasionally you might find a woman that will consent to that kind of a fantasy, but really and truly, bro, you know what I'm saying? We see, we see this kind of stuff happen, man. Guy gets drunk and he does, but there's like on a subconscious level, there's been, there's a want, there's a need for it because he's been watching it so much online. It's crazy, man. Man, and I can, I can speak directly on what the prophet peace be upon him said because when I was back in the day watching this stuff, like not to get into details, but I was unconscious of a lot of things and I, I treated people very, very poorly, but that's also because... Wow. I was yeah. treating myself very poorly. And it's yeah. Yeah. it's like you said, you get a stain and you get another stain, you get another stain. And then you get to the point where you just, you are unaware of the good and the bad. You're unaware of what you're doing. And it wasn't mm-hmm. until I cut that out that I started to see, ah, okay, this is not good. This mm-hmm. is good here. Like, okay, when I act like this, it's not good. It's actually uh, pushing people away from me. You know, so, alhamdulillah, bro. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Wallah, man, I'm, I'm very happy that Allah allowed you to overcome it, man. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully, many of us watching, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna hopefully get some, seek some inspiration from this, inshallah. So, my bro, talk to me. So, so you managed to overcome that. Tell me a bit more about your, your journey in terms of self improvement and that which eventually brought you closer to Islam. Because you know, there's, there's a quote that I came across many years ago that it was not from a Muslim, it's from a non-Muslim guy, but it was profound. And you know, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that. You know the actually what was a statement of the of the early generations authentically that you know uh, the 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 truth is a lost property of a believer. So even if even if a non-Muslim says it, you know what I'm saying if it's truth, you got to take it now, and it, it it resonated with me deeply. And I think this might you it might it might resonate with you as well, considering that you know you've been you know you've been on this self improvement journey. So he said, success is the result of good judgment, and good judgment comes from experience, but experience comes from bad judgment. So in essence, you want to make as many mistakes in your life as possible, not intentionally, but you want to make as many mistakes so you can learn what not to do, learn from them, gain experience and make the right judgment, get closer to success. So I'd be interested to hear a bit more about these judgments that perhaps perhaps might not have been so on the on 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 the mark that eventually you know led you to Islam. Yeah, yeah. So man, there's a lot of judgments. There's a lot of bad experiences, but um, I say the first one. I I say the first one. So when when I stopped watching pornography and I started getting on this whole self improvement journey, the reason why I kept going and I didn't just cut it off there, you know, because a lot of people they'll they'll say, ah, okay, I want to stop watching pornography, and then I lost the dump. Like they, they don't watch it anymore. They go on with their life and that's it. They don't, they don't improve anymore. They don't do anything else to uh, better themselves or better their lives. But when I had cut off the pornography, it was, it was, it was like I was using it to cover up something that was even bigger. And the okay. thing that I was covering up was uh, just a lot of, a lot of trauma from my childhood because okay. I had been abused and, like I, I had realized how much it was affecting me and I was like, it was playing in the background and it was making me act in certain ways. Like if I was around certain people, I would start closing up. My voice would get really high pitched. Oh, wow. um, I, I would avoid confrontation. I would avoid eye contact with people. Um, had a lot of social anxiety. Okay. Man, what, what, what did I not have? I, I was, uh, I was in, at the time, I, I would have called it hell, but you know, obviously, hell is something different. But it was it was my own personal hell, and I, yeah. I knew that if I wanted to get out, that I, I had to I had to take that first step. Like it wasn't just gonna happen like out of nowhere. So that's where I started taking those first steps, man. Wow, wow, wow! That's quite pro- quite profound because. You know, we live in a day and age where like mental health is a big problem. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a huge issue. And a lot of people are afraid to speak about it. And the the sad thing is that, you know, all the many ways that it manifests, you know, it manifests in social anxiety, sometimes it manifests in, you know, like uh, you know, self hate. Sometimes it 
manifest in low self-esteem sometimes it will manifest in what they call body dysphoria like you know what i'm saying and everyone's got like a different solution some people they go get a sex change some people they go find a girl some people go drink some people go take some drugs you know what i'm saying but um you know no like and 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 we find that no matter how many solutions we keep presenting the problem is exponentially getting bigger we've got more and more mental health issues coming out and 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 some mental health issues are becoming so common that it's like they're not even called mental health anymore they're being they're being classified as as normal like for example like the whole body dysphoria thing i'm going off topic slightly but i think it's important to just have these kind of conversations you know like body dysphoria is like you know when you when you hate your body you know what i'm saying like you hate your body and and this leads to um like you know a lot of people having like sex changes you know what i'm saying and like you know like a like yeah, you you are going through some kind of a mental crisis and you don't know any better but when you have a doctor that sits in front of you and tells you well actually the world health organization has normalized it as it's not even a mental health issue no more it's it's a it's it, it just means you've got to basically change your body you know what i'm saying and then you find that you know you get a sex change but it don't say it solve the problem that's why you got so many people that end up getting a sex change they end up reverting back or or staying in that way but still regretting it because what they realize is the problem was not actually anything to do with the external it was an internal problem you know what i'm saying and 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 that's just one example like we're forever trying to provide solutions for these mental health issues but they're not working but you know i was actually having a conversation with this um one 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 guy that became a woman and he was telling me about this whole body dysphoria thing that you know he was kind of going through. And I, I I broke it down to him. I said, you know, I said, you know, the Quran has your answer. Like the Allah, like you believe you have a creator. Okay, cool. But then the creator knows you best, right? So Allah said in the Quran, Allah Should I not know that which I created? Meaning I know you, I know you better than anyone else. He said, Allah He said, I created you, so I legislated. I created you, so I made a rule book, I made a command, I made a legislation to go in line with with your creation. Like if I buy an Apple phone. Apple has the right to tell me how it functions. Samsung can't tell me how to function my iPhone because they never made that. They never made the iPhone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, so Allah, who who knows the human psyche and the human essence, He told us, "Wa man a'rada an dhikri, fa inna lahu ma'isha tanqa." He said, "Anyone who turns away from my remembrance, anyone who stops remembering, you know, who turns away from my reminder, then he will live a depressed life." You know what I'm saying? As in depression. And mental anxiety, mental stress Although there are triggers For example, the way a person treats you Trauma that you might go through in your childhood But in essence, like what What what, what causes it to remain And prevents it from being removed Is that distance from Allah now, For example, someone experiences trauma in their life Something that they were supposed to have Either got damaged or got taken away You know what I'm saying? So you're forever looking for that to be You're ever look, forever looking to be healed or, or for that gap to be filled But the thing is That no human can fill that for you you know what I'm saying? That's 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 the gap that Allah feels for you. You know what I'm saying? And that's why Allah said in another verse, Allah bi dhikri Allahi tatma in al qulub in the remembrance of Allah, the hearts find peace. So you know, if a person just comes back to their Lord, they come back to their Lord. Suddenly, everything makes sense and everything falls into place. You know what I'm saying? And having that having that connection, that re relationship with your with your Creator, it kind of just it mends broken hearts. Cause you know, like if a person breaks his heart because they had expectations. In his girl or his job or his workplace, I'm saying you you can't blame your girl for breaking your heart. I have to I have, I have to blame myself. My girl or my wife broke my heart because I shouldn't have expected her to maintain my heart. The heart is fragile. If I put my if I put a glass vase on the edge of a table, it's likely to break and shatter. When it shatters, I can't blame the table. I have to blame myself for placing something fragile in a place that was really not able to hack it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I find I feel like. I feel like people really need to, like, you know, like a lot of time we talk about religion, we have like very like academic conversations that sometimes can be a bit abstract, but there's a very spiritual element to this. You know what I'm saying? Where like, I feel like people, they really need, they really need to get to know their creator in this day and age. Like, you know, not being distant from your creator just opens up so many questions. What's my purpose in life? You're searching for it. These to anxiety, you know what I'm saying? What am I here? What do I do with my body? Is my body mine? If it's mine, then you know I can do whatever I want with it. But if it's not mine, if it's God's body, as in, as in not his body, as in, but as in he owns the body, he owns my body, then obviously I have to abide by what he told me. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot that comes from it, man. Sorry, I cut you off though. That was just my two cents. You're good, you're good. Cents. That was a good two cents, bro. So I agree 100%. 
I, I agree 100% because when I was doing this whole, um, at the time it was called No Fat. That's what they call No Fat. No Fat. Yeah, I see. You, I see, you I heard see about the There's a website, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's more so like a business. People don't understand that. That's more so like a business. Mm. And it's it's cool that they're trying to help, but it's still a business nonetheless. All right. Mm. So people have to get that understood. It's, it's more so like if you want to quit, don't try to label it anything. Just, you know, you quit. But when mm-hmm. I got onto that journey, when I when I decided, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit pornography, and then I started actually being successful. Alhamdulillah, that's when I started seeing, like I said, the the issue that I had. But during that time, I was atheist. During that time, I was atheist. I did not believe in anything except what I could see, facts, science, mm. and it's like, and I spoke about this in my video. You know, I'm not proud of it, but anytime someone would try to bring up God or spirituality, anything, I would shut it down. And to be honest, man, subhanAllah, God literally guides everyone. Allah guides everyone. Or if God guides who he wills, I should correct myself there. Because I was atheist. I was, for lack of better words, I was in the dark. And then once I started overcoming this addiction, I started seeing the problems that I had and I understood, okay, I need to take the first step. Once I took that first step, Allah just helped me the rest of the way. Like, I can't say it was me. I cannot say it was me because if it was me, I would still be stuck where I was. But mm-hmm. it's like, once I took that first step, once I decided, okay, I'm going to take this first step, this this step of faith, this leap of faith right here, I took that first step and it's like, I was just being guided the entire time. Like, okay, here, do this over here do this right here. And it's like, I was seeing signs. I was seeing things happening. So when I was seeing this, you already know, bro, my fitra started kicking back in. And I was like, ah, like, like I I couldn't say that I believe, but it's like, there was, there were clear evident signs being displayed in front of me. And for me to be ignorant and not see them for what they were, you know, I don't know, man. That's, be- that's 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 beautiful. You know it, what, what you said sounds a bit familiar to uh, a verse in the Quran. You know when Allah was talking to the, about the Prophet to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, He said, "Fawajadaka dalan." We found you and you were not guided. Fahada, we guided you. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, before he became before he became a prophet, obviously he was he was he was he, he never had the detailed you know understanding of Religion and Allah until he he revelation was sent to him, so Allah saying I was I was already taking care of you before then, so kind of kind of kind of kind of kind of like you here, right? Even before like Allah's Allah's just been watching over you, you know what I'm saying? Been watching over you, and it's beautiful because He's been watching over all of us really and truly. But the prophet, the, the problem is that we don't we don't appreciate. But you know what I'm saying? There was there was this there was a sense of appreciation in your heart, and um, cause you know you said Allah He guides whom He wills. But does that mean that someone might take from that? Does that mean that Allah He He would just pick and choose who to guide and condemn some people for the hellfire for eternity and guides others because He just prefers them? No, because there's another verse Allah said, "Wama yudillu bihi illa al-fasiqin." He doesn't misguide anyone except that they are people who are evil. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they are people for f- they transgressors, they're sinners. So if a person ends up not being guided, it's because his heart weren't clean in the first place, you know what I'm saying? But it shows that Alhamdulillah, you was you was you was being critical, you was asking the right question, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you was being appreciative of whatever progress you was making, searching, and eventually that led you down down to uh, down to where you are. And that's a beautiful thing. I want to ask you a question though. You see that whole atheism thing, yeah? Because again, we can we can discuss it from a from an intellectual perspective, and I'm happy to do that. But I think it's important to really discuss these issues spiritually. So, like um, atheists, generally speaking. Like um, what what uh what is the, what is their mindset like? I really want to get into the mind of an atheist. I really want to understand like what it's like to think like an atheist. Like what is what is your life like when you are just living, and really there's no there's no higher authority over you. It's like your I am basically I'm God. That's as in as in a deity is one that's to be obeyed. 
You know what I'm saying? But I, I ain't got no one to obey except for myself, really and truly. So, so, so what is, what is, what is the thing that governs an atheist life and decision making? Is it himself and his desires, or is it like, I don't know, like society? Is it government? Like, I, I, I don't want to superimpose my beliefs. Obviously, coming from there, just if you just explain to us a bit about the internal kind of, you know. Well, the thing that governs someone who is an atheist. Mm -hmm. um they'll they'll say science bro like if i was in that position i would have said science but it, it's shaitan bro it is shaitan like the more that you understand the more you see okay that's mm -hmm. what it is because when you are atheist or speaking for myself when i was atheist that's the most miserable i've ever been in my life you know that's the most miserable i've ever been. It, it, do you think that's common amongst atheists do you think atheists generally do you, do you feel like some of them they, they have this lacking this longing to want, want without a doubt without a doubt yeah. bro and I feel like a lot of them will disregard that and a lot of them be like, nah, nah, it's not true. Like, I'm the happiest that I've ever been. But, bro, that's the ego speaking. That's the yeah. ego speaking. And, bro, people who are atheists have big egos. Bro, look at all the atheists that are in the base. Like, they have the biggest egos. But let me let me step back, bro. I'm getting a little hype here. All right, so <laughs> it, speaking for myself, I have... I have a big ego. I'm not going to lie to you. I have a big ego. Um, but Alhamdulillah, Salat is one of the things that has really allowed me to put my ego aside. When I was atheist, you know, I had that big ego. And I, I thought very highly of myself. I was very arrogant. And I treated people very harshly and very um, just not good. You know, just mm -hmm. not good. And when I would do things, if I felt sad, I would immediately do something that would just cover that up. So I would watch pornography. Mm. I would do drugs, you know, and I don't say this because I'm proud of it because I know we're not supposed to say the, uh, the things that are sins, but it's like to drive home the example here, like mm. these are the things that I did. And like, I, my brother, I, I had a motorcycle and I took it to over 130 something miles per hour. Now, that's not that fast to some people, but like 130 something miles per hour, if something goes wrong, like that's it. See, you're gone. Yeah. You're gone. Bro, like I was doing things that is just reckless and I was only doing it to feel something because I felt empty. Mm. That's deep. So I, I agree, man. I agree 100% that, um, it is a stain, bro. And like, my mind's kind of going off track here, but yeah, it's it's misery, bro. That's that's what people feel when they're in. Uh... So you know, you 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 know, you mentioned something interesting there. You said if you know if the atheist will say science. So if we if we if we if we unpackage that for a bit, you know, if you think of science, what is the what what is the primary scientific theory? Maybe not primary, but what is one of the foundational, fundamental scientific theories that atheists would use to help answer questions of life? It would be the theory of evolution, right? Yeah. Like that, I mean, for them, they they, they claim that it answers the questions of, of the origin of life. Even it doesn't because we don't know where the first soul came from or how even the first soul split or, you know what I'm saying? What kind of things there, but I'm saying it will give it to them for argument's sake. That's, that's, their, that's their holy grail, if, you know, for lack of a better term. But then I think to myself, you know, I mean, sci the theory of evolution don't really show you how to live. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know how you said that, you know, you you think highly of yourself perhaps, or, you know, you treat people low, you put people low. Um, that's kind of like a animal kingdom mentality. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when you, you know, they say, if you if 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 I if I look into a jungle, if I look into a zoo and, and I say, yo, these are my these are my these are my relatives, you know what I'm saying? We have common <laughs> somewhere, somewhere up in that chain, we have a common ancestry, you know what I'm saying? Um then it will make you it will make you kind of lose some degree of morality. You know what I'm saying? Because in the animal kingdom, there's no morality. Like in, in the animal kingdom, when when a when a lion kills a gazelle, you don't say he murdered the gazelle, you say killed the gazelle. You know what I'm saying? When a when a when a, when when a great white shark, you know, forcefully has intercourse with another great white shark, you don't see rapes, you see it copulates. You 
because that moral element has been taken out of the action. You know what I'm saying? So now, although although legally speaking, when you kill someone, you can't say, "Yo, survive of the fittest." You'll say murder because legally speaking, they know there's going to be anarchy. You know what I'm saying? But like, what what, what it, it's it, it's mad because. Because the people are not stupid in the sense where you can tell them, okay, legally speaking, you're going to go to jail for raping. You're going to go to jail for murder. You're going to go to jail for speaking. Sorry, sorry, for stealing. But you've told them you are part of the animal kingdom. And when I look into the animal kingdom and I see what animals do, and you know what I'm saying? No one, no one, no, there's, there's no, no one throws a lion in jail when it murders or kills a gazelle because it's not murder. You know what I'm saying? That moral element has been taken out. The 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 moral equity within that action has been removed, and it's just survival of the fittest. But you've told me survival of the fittest as well. But when I go steal from someone, you put me in jail. But I got to survive. When I kill my enemy, because you see the guys from the block, if like for example, I do a lot of work with kids on the streets here, and that's their mentality. Literally, when you speak to them, they tell you survival of the fittest, bro. You know what I'm saying if I end up in the wrong block, it's either me or him. So I'm gonna take him out before he takes me out. So it's like. You create a situation for people to really act immorally And you've got no way to, to morally govern them Because you're taking God out of the equation You know what I'm saying? Evolution don't really give you good morals And when, and, and when you've got a society that's, that's looking in to the animal kingdom As a reference point for where they came from And how they should behave I.e. survive the fittest Which is their primary, primary uh, you know, pillar, p pillar here uh, Or primary principle upon which they build this stuff you're going to have a lot of chaos. You're going to have a lot of oppression. Because in, 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 in the animal kingdom, oppression takes place. And an animal will oppress another animal to survive. You know what I'm saying? And that oppression, we, I'm saying we see that today. I mean, look at these big corporations. You know, I saw a documentary about, you know, Teflon. I'm not sure if you've seen, you know, Teflon, um, the cooking um, material. Like, there's, 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 they, they made it in such a dangerous way where like inside their factory, um, like so many people got cancer from working there because of the substance that they were inhaling that's inside their products, and the women who had pregnancies all were affected either by miscarriage or deformed babies, and then that product has made its way all around the world, and they actually done they actually detected that that substance that that substance that's a cancer kind of you know um, connected substance is actually in in like ninety five percent of the world's population, you know what I'm saying? But there's nothing to hold them back. There's nothing to hold them back. Survive the fittest. You know what I'm saying? Even they knew their papers. But you think to myself, you think to yourself, like, bro, like you're killing people, bro. You're the reason why, why thousands of people are dying. You know what I'm saying? But you don't even care. You know what I'm saying? Because survive the fittest, bro. It's my company, it's corporate, you know, it's corporate America. We just gotta make it happen. So it's like then, then you then, then you wanna look down on people for like not following the law. But you you gave them a, a framework and a mindset to behave in a certain type of way. So you can't now say, well, we're gonna put you in jail if you behave and act out your nature, which is your animalistic nature, you know what I'm saying? So I can understand how that leads people to a lot of sadness and pain and just never being happy with themselves because they're always doing things that are like animalistic and humans are not animals. It's, we're not meant to be like that, you know what I'm saying? Bro, I had... Um... When I was acting from that state, you know, and I, I'll go as far as to say that if if every man were to act from this state and we'll, we'll say it's an unconscious state, because when, when a man is conscious, he's he's aware and he's aware how he treats others and how he treats himself. Mm -hmm. But when he's unconscious, he's not aware of these things. He's just and he, he's acting very animalistic, for lack of better words, like you're saying, right? When I was in that state and what I was trying to say is that every man who is in the state is going to want to dominate. You know, mm -hmm. is going to want to be like the top. It, alpha call, call it the alpha. Yeah, yeah call it the alpha, yeah. whatever you want to call it. But it's like, I'm a man. So obviously I'm, I have that. But then I also went through a childhood where I was being oppressed. I was being physically and mentally and emotionally abused. So it's like a part of me didn't want anyone to ever treat me that way. So, I would try to dominate others even more. Like I'm talking about the friends that I would have, the people I would come into contact with. It was terrible, dude. It was terrible. And it's, like I said, alhamdulillah, that, that's changed. But just to like, to touch on something, bro, to touch on what you're saying about the science and what they, um, the beliefs and all that, or uh, atheists, I should say, their beliefs. The thing that hit me the most 
is that science is two steps behind. Mm. Science is playing catch up. Everything that science is coming onto, it's already been there. Mm. Like when they figured out oxygen, did did oxygen just appear out of nowhere? It's been there. <laughs> it's been there. So it's like when when they try to say, "Oh, God is not real" and stuff like that, it's like you can't disprove it. So, 100. hey, if if Allah wants you to find evidence of him, then he he'll, he'll let you do that. But I highly doubt that Allah will do that because then it's like, well, then it w- it would take away the whole point of the test, would it not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So there's, they're definitely going to find signs, but in terms of that, you know, they, like, I think you mean people, they say things like, for example, why why doesn't God speak to me then? You know what I'm saying? Why doesn't God show himself to me? Like I'm saying, there's no need. He's given you enough already to see. You know what I'm saying? There's no need. Like I'm saying, for you to know, like for you to know that nothing doesn't ever bring about anything. And this universe is something. So it couldn't have come from nothing. It had to have come from something. You know what I'm saying? Allah said, uh, Allah said, did, did you did you did you create yourselves or did you come from nothing? You can't create yourself because imagine a pregnant woman, but she gives birth to herself. That don't even make sense. You've got existing not exist at the same time, you know what I'm saying? You can't come from nothing. We know nothing only brings about nothing. So there had to be something. And then immediately, okay, you ask yourself, okay, well, if there has to be something, then what is this something? And this way they say, you know, maybe it's some other universe or, you know, uh, I even had one atheist told me, look me in the face and say, it was a celestial Elvis Presley. He goes to me. And you got the nerve to tell me I'm backward. <laughs> so It's zero plus zero. It can't equal one. You know what I'm saying? So there has to be something. Now you have to just ask, well, what is the nature of this of this being? So then when you look into the universe, you notice that the universe is, it has, it has design. And you also observe that the universe has, 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 has power, has potential, has energy. You know what I'm saying? Energy, power, it can't come. Like, for example, when you split an atom, look at the massive release of energy. Look at the massive power, the potential that even one atom has. You know, when you split a series of atoms, you have an atomic bomb. You can wipe out a whole city. You, 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 you split enough atoms, you can wipe out the whole earth. I'm saying there's a lot of power and energy that's been placed in the universe. Now this this power can't come from weakness. You know what I'm saying? The strength of an atom can't come from weakness. Where did it come from? It had to have come from one that is even more supreme than the atom that placed it there. Hence, now you know that if the atom has ability, the one who placed the atom, they had to have more ability. N- number two, when you look at the universe, you see you see intelligence. You know what I'm saying? Even 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 Richard Dawkins, who's one of the most up there atheists, will tell you when you look at the universe, you can't help but feel that there is intelligent design. It's because there is, you know what I'm saying? There's design. There's I mean, it's either designed or it's not. It's chaos, but we know chaos don't bring order, but it's order in the universe. You know what I'm saying? We see order in the universe. So, but 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 chaos can't bring about order. You know what I'm saying? Chaos brings about chaos. So you know that there's design. So then Design necessitates that the, that the one who designed it is intelligent. And you know what's profound is that these two things that I just mentioned, by observing the universe, you can see that the one who created the universe or caused the universe to come into create to come into being had ability number one, and had knowledge is actually what Allah said in the Quran. He said, "Who is the one who created seven heavens from the earth? Who is the one who created seven heavens from the earth? And from the earth, like them." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he is the one who created the heavens and the earth and then his command descended. Why? For one reason, so that you can know. In other words, when you look at the heavens, when you look at the universe, when you look at the earth, when you look at this world, when you look at it, you can come to know something. You can come to know that Allah ala kulli shayin qadir, that the one who created all of this has got ability. Allah qad ahata bi kulli shayin ilma, and he also has knowledge. As in when you look at the universe, you will know, you, you will come to the rational, you know what I'm saying, conclusion that this universe, in it is ability and in it is knowledge, or in it is remnants of knowledge. This knowledge can't come from ignorance, so the one who brought it had to have been knowledgeable, and it can't, and, and, and the ability can't, and, and the power that's in here can't come from a lack of ability. So that the one who brought it had to have been able to put this ability here, you know what I'm saying? And that's profound because like the Quran, even though it's not a book of science and it's uh, it's not a book of philosophy, no. Um, and it's not a book of like, you know, logical syllogisms and whatnot, but it's a book of science, but it appeals to your intellect. It appeals to your intellect. It 
in light of the world in which we live. And that's why the great scholar Ibn, Ibn Qayyim, he said that, you know, Allah, he gave us two books. One's a closed book and one's an open book. The closed book is the Quran. You open it and you read. The open book is the universe. And each one is read in, in a cor correlation and corroboration with the other. Like in another verse, Allah said, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَةٍ لِّأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ when you, you know the, the heavens and the earth When you look The stars The night The day There are signs For those who have intellect Now like an intelligent person Will look at the sun He'll look at the star He'll look at the moon He'll look at the sky He'll look at the night He'll look at the day He'll think he say What is this motion What is this order This this the, You know what I'm saying He'll, he'll think He'll deep He'll investigate You know what I'm saying And they come to the conclusion Man it had to be, a, be a, been a, it Had to be a creator here. That's why I really don't understand With atheists What it is like they, 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 it's like they, they feign this intelligence, you know what I'm saying? But then, then it's like, okay, you're being so logical and you're being so intellectual, but then you say dumb things like the universe came from nothing. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like you say, you get the point, it's, it, like it's profound. There's a verse in the Quran, Allah said, uh, sorry, I'm going on here, man, but it's, uh, it's, uh, there's a verse, Allah said, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارِ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمْرِ Allah said from his signs, signs that are his signs. A sign is something that directs you. These are signs that direct you to Allah. When you look at Allah said from his signs, the sun, the moon. When you look at the sun and the moon, you're supposed to think, how did this get here? Who is the one that brought this here? You know what I'm saying? So these are his signs, the sun, the moon, the night and the day. Allah said these are his signs, right? And then after that, because Allah knows that some people are going to look at his signs and forget that they are signs and think that they are the objects. They are the objective. You see, when, imagine, imagine I'm trying to get to Japan and I take signs. Well, I mean, Japan, I have to fly. But let's just say I'm trying to get, let's just say I'm in America. I'm trying to get from New York to California. So there's signs on the way. But imagine I get to the sign and I set up shop there. That's stupid. That's not, the sign's not the objective. You know what I'm saying? So Allah is say, Allah saying the, the sun and the moon, these are signs. The heavens and the earth, the stars are signs. The cosmos is a sign that directs you to him. But what they do is that they stop at the sign. So look what Allah said. Allah said, لا تسجدوا للشمس ولا للقمر Allah said, don't worship the sun and the moon Why are you worshipping the sun and the moon? Rather, وَشْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُنَّ Rather, worship the one who created them You know what I'm saying? Like you'll stop at the sun and say Wow, they speak You know how we say, subhanAllah which, Glory to Allah When they talk about the universe Like, yo, glory to the universe Bro, they worship in the universe They venerate the universe As if it's their God You know what I'm saying? But it's like, bro, use your mind, bro. Like, where did this come from? You know, if the universe is great, then imagine the one that brought it into being. But now you want to play dumb and say, God of the gaps. It's not God of the gaps, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, it's, it's, if anything, it's science of the gaps. We, they, they, they say, oh, when you can't answer a question, you say God. Well, we say, bro, well, you did the same. When well, science can't answer the question, you say science. <laughs> You're guilty of the same thing. You're accusing us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's shocking. It's shocking stuff, man. It's shocking stuff. Yeah, man, atheists remind me of, um, and probably not many viewers here will be too keen on this, but um, over here in the West, in America, there's a uh, you know, Christmas time, you know, Santa Claus and all that stuff. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's like when you when you're a kid, you you really believe in like, oh wow, like Santa Claus is real, and like, and yeah. atheist reminds me of like that kid that just found out that like, uh, Santa Claus isn't real. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's upset. like where the kid, where the kids hurt, the kids upset. So he's like trying to take it out on everyone. He's he's having a little fit, but it's like, dude, if you just if you just chill out, take a step back, and really look at everything, like you will receive the answers. You will see yeah. for yourself. So, bro, let me ask you a question. What what was the most profound sign that really, you know, woke you up, kind of thing? Uh, woke me up to. Yeah. To Islam or yeah, yeah, to Islam, yeah. To... Or, or even no, we don't have to jump straight to Islam. Just in, on your journey. So, I think the biggest sign was um, I was walking one night with my sister's baby daddy, and yeah. we were talking about something. And we would always go on these walks and just talk about life and all that. And mm -hmm. I think it was like 2012, 2013. And he, he just stopped out of nowhere. And then he looked at me in a very confronting manner. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, uh, I'm, I'm walking with you. It's nighttime. <laughs> We're talking about uh, this conversation. He's like, no, no, no. What are you doing? 
And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, what are you doing in your life? And I was like, well, I'm going to school. Um, I'm with a girl. Uh, what? I work at this one place. I worked at GNC at the time. And okay. he was like, all right, but like, what are you doing with your life? Like, how old are you right now? And I was, I think I was like 19 or 20 years old. And at that time, he he basically broke it down in a way where it's like, look, let's say you're only going to live until you're 70 years old. You're 20 years old now. Let's say um, five to 10 years of that, you're going to be spending sleeping or something like mm-hmm. that. And it's like, what are you doing with the rest of your life? Like, do you realize your time here on this earth is so limited and you're over here wasting it away doing all this? Because he, bro, he would see me on a day-to-day basis. He would see what I was doing. He saw, like, how I was just wasting away my life, wasting away my mm-hmm. time with pornography, with video games, with this girl, going to parties, doing all these things. And it's like, he, he, he woke me up. He said something where it's like, when I really reflected on it, I was like, damn, you're right. Like, what am I doing with my life? And then from there, it's like, I, I kind of, I started waking up. I was like, all right, yeah, I have to do something different. But I didn't know what I had to do. I just knew that I had to do something different. And then I remember from there, um, that's when, you know, something happened. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say details because it would probably be haram if I said details on this. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I basically realized I had a, I had the addiction with pornography. And then from there, mm-hmm. you know, Alhamdulillah, Allah guided me to where I'm at. Alhamdulillah. Wallah, beautiful man. Beautiful man. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So, but okay, so, 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 when, like, in terms of like engaging you spiritually or even intellectually, what was it about Islam that kind of latched onto you like that? To be honest, man, it was the moment I picked up the Quran and I started to read it, it, it all just made sense. And it, it felt like I was coming home, for lack of better words. Oh, wow. You know, like I was reading something where I was like, oh, like I've been looking for this. You know what I mean? And it was the first time that I actually picked it up and read it. So I'm reading it. And it's like, it's all just kind of making sense. And then I remember... And, like I said in my reverse story, there's um, I was doing a dopamine detox throughout this whole thing, mm-hmm. and I'll get into that if you want. But to finish the the details here, I, I remember the third day of reading the Quran, I had put it down, and literally I was sitting right here, exactly where I'm at. I was sitting mm-hmm. down, and I remember I I sat down the Quran. I sat down just to kind of reflect on everything that I had just read, and it's like a part of me just accepted everything it all clicked it all just made sense and i was like yeah like allah allah is the one and i was like this is the truth and then it's like a part of me just like understood that like i knew i knew it was prophet muhammad peace be upon him that was the one that's obviously you know saying all this so it's like a part of me just all understood and like accepted all so i guess in that moment i I took my shahada without realizing I took my shahada. Oh, wow. And it's like this, this overwhelming, like, peace came across me. And, like, I felt these waves going through my body. And it sounds weird, man. But it's the best explanation that I can give. And I've never felt anything like that in my life. So it's like in that moment, it was just like, this is it. Like, there's no, oh, but it could be this. No, it could be this over here. It was not, nah, this is it. This is it. You know, you know what it is? It's like for a person who's been searching for that thing for so long, he knows exactly what it is that he's looking for. So when you come across it, you just know this is it. It's like, for example, you know, at the time of uh, Moses, uh, Musa alayhi salam, his time, uh, the people, they, they were into magic, magic tricks and illusions. So um, one of the miracles that Allah gave him was that his stick, his staff would turn into a snake that was even bigger and uh, more, um, you know, like it was stronger and, and just greater than 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 the little because they they do illusion with sticks and um and like strings and thread and ropes and whatever have you. So, so when that when 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 Musa threw his staff down and the magicians were there competing with him, um. 
his Musa's staff became a snake, and that snake literally devoured all of the other, uh, you know, illusionary snakes. And when that happened, the magicians they fell into sajda straight away. They fell into sujood. They fell in to just submission, to prostration on the floor. They put their head on the ground, and they said, "Amanna bi Rabbil Alamin." We believe in the Lord of everything that exists, Rabbi Musa wa Harun, the Lord of Moses and Aaron, you know what I'm saying? And the scholars took a benefit here. They said because the magicians knew magic, you know what I'm saying? They knew what illusion was. They knew what Moses had was not magic. Because they were involved in magic their whole life. They knew this is not magic. This is greater than magic. This is something else. You know what I'm saying? This is something else. So a person who's been searching or dealing with something his whole life, when he finds the cure, he knows this is the cure. He don't have to look no further. You know what I'm saying? So some people they say Oh look you found Islam But how do you know Another religion might not be true Like look into another religion I'm saying bro I don't need to look into Another religion Because I don't have no questions But you need to look Because you have questions My question has been answered Here I'm home As you said I'm home When I'm home I'm not going to look For another house right But you're not home yet You're searching for a house So that's why you need to look Is this your, is Islam your house You know what I'm saying yep, Exactly <laughs> Man and before I even came To Islam Like I was looking at other religions and mm. it was crazy is um they all have a piece of the puzzle and it's almost like they at one point were getting the message but they messed it up it's like the telephone game if i'm telling you a certain thing and it's going around in a circle mm. and then by the time it comes back to you if it's changed well mm. then it's game over you have to start over you know yeah. if, the, if the message is the same well then halas bro you're done like that's it game's done but it's like with all these other religions they have like a little piece and then at some point they just altered it they messed it up and then what got yeah. me is like wow like the quran has been the same for over 1400 years it has not been altered the telephone yeah. game it has gone around and it has not been altered like mm -hmm. this is the full this is the answer this is the full puzzle this is all the pieces connected Versus all the other religions had like just maybe one piece, maybe two, maybe five pieces. Mm. But then Islam had the entire thing. The whole thing. Well, that's actually that's actually true. You know, um, this is one of the proofs, you know, you know, one of the greatest proofs of Islam, as you said, is the fact that the Quran has never been changed. And um, you know, sometimes to explain this to people, it can get a bit technical, but a very simplified way to explain the point. And also the proof to the point is as follows. Um, as you said, all the other religions, you know what I'm saying? It could have been that there was, it started off with true. Maybe maybe they were like, Christianity, Jesus was sent to them. Judaism, Moses was sent to them. And many other prophets. But the issue is that they tampered their, with their religion. And their religion got changed because of human interference. You know what I'm saying? When human interference comes in, then what happens? The religion gets it changes because Allah is perfect, but human beings are not. Um, now, when it comes to the Quran, obviously the claim is that you know there's no human interference. You know what I'm saying? And it can be proved on many levels. Um, and obviously, Orientalists are always gonna you know there's 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 back and forths with them. But they never actually ever bring any substance. But one very simple way to prove that the Quran has never ever been changed, has never been changed, is as follows. You know, there's something in there's something in terms there's something called testimony. You, you you know what testimony is, right? Even philosophers, they have this, there's this term called testimony. When I say, how do you know that your mom's your mom? Like you don't have proof except her word. You ain't done a DNA test. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, for example, how do you know London exists without ever having been there? Testimony. Someone who went there told you or took a picture of London and said, yo, this is London. But you've never been there yourself. Even if you look at science, when a scientist comes and, you know, he does, uh, you know, some, some kind of scientific study, he does it on the back of studies that have already been done. But he hasn't verified those studies by doing the experiments himself. He just took their word for it. Testimony, you know what I'm saying? So testimonies of different types, and some testimony is strong, and some testimony is weak, and some testimony is reliable, and some testimony is not reliable. Um, and there's a there's a there's a type of testimony 
which is which which can't be disproven now. And this is called recurrent reporting, recurrent testimony. For example, if I was to tell you now, have you ever been to London? But if but but you know London exists, right? I'm saying, but if I was to tell you London doesn't exist, then that means I'm claiming a mass conspiracy. Why? Because you have so many people from different time zones, different time zones in the world. They lived throughout different generations. They never met. They spoke different languages. And they are all affirming the same thing. They are all affirming that London exists. So for me to now say to you London doesn't exist, I'm claiming, I'm claiming a conspiracy, which is that all these people had to have met at some point throughout history and agreed upon a lie and said, hey, we're going to issue this lie that, that what? That London exists. You know what I'm saying? Far-fetched. But the reason why you know that it's, it's that, that, that's, that, that claim, anyone who questions the existence of London is baseless is because, not because you've been there, but because of the testimony. It's too large. So with the Quran, it's similar. When you look throughout, when you look throughout generations, when you look throughout generations, you find that people have memorized the Quran and transmitted it. They never met. They spoke different languages, different cultures, different time zones, not just generations, 1400 years, okay? And they have recited the exact same Quran. You know what I'm saying? And it's not changed. There are, there, are, there are different modes of recitation that all came from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, which are all part of the one Quran. The one Quran has all these different modes. Uh, of recitation But It never changed Now Imagine As you said in a telephone game Or we call it Chinese whispers One sentence In the same room We speak the same language Same time Same place And we're trying our best But one sentence If you go across 10 people By the time it makes it to the end It's been tampered But here you have a book In a different language that's being memorized by people, different ages, different backgrounds, different races, different languages, different cultures, different generations, and they bring you the same thing. And then, and then, and then when, the, when, when, when these Orientalists, they attack us, and they say, ah, but there's differences in, we say the differences are in the mode of recitation. For example, instead of saying, Maliki Yomidin, Maliki Yomidin. Instead of saying, Maliki, Maliki I'm, I'm Number one, all of that can be traced back to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He taught those different modes of recitation. That's, that's a conversation that's beyond the scope of our discussion as it is anyway. But the point is that that's all you can bring? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, like, so so that's, a, that's a miracle. Like you think to yourself, bro, no, that nothing has already been preserved. Nothing that complex as a book has been preserved through oral tradition. Oral tradition over 1400 years in that way. Yeah, of course it was written out and everything and it's been preserved, but the primary preservation of the Quran was through oral tradition and it's there. Like I'm saying, you can go right now to a kid in China and say, read the Quran and then stop and go all the way to Africa. You can go to like, for example, Gambia, pick up another kid and say, yo, carry on from where he left off. They never met each other. And like that, you can travel around the world and where one kid leaves, get another one to start. And then let them, let them carry on like that. You know what I'm saying? And you finish the whole Quran. And these people never met each other. You could do that today. If you had a time machine, you could have started off a thousand plus years ago. And you could have, instead of going to different countries, you could have skipped generations. You know what I'm saying? And everyone will finish it the same way. You know what I'm saying? It's nuts. It's That's nuts. crazy. That's yeah, crazy, crazy, man. So that was, that was, that, that was, that was the, like the, one, of, one, of, one of the most profound things to prove to you, huh? Yeah, man, when I experienced that, it just it cemented it for me. And I remember I, I was talking to my friend, and, and he's Muslim. You know, he was a born Muslim, but he just recently started practicing, like, real, real hardcore with everything, you know, alhamdulillah. And when I told him my experience, he's like, he's like, man, you're a Muslim. I was like, what do you mean, bro? Like, don't I have to do something, like, special? He's like, nah, bro, you're a Muslim. Like you just have to do your shahada, like declare it uh, out loud, Amazing. and um, so I'm saying no baptisms, no no mad ceremony. It's simple. You just got to say what you believe. Exactly, bro. Yo, and I have I have the funniest story. All right, so there was a time where I was 
trying to be Christian, but it, it, it never clicked for me. I, and it, I really was, I probably was really doing it because of the, um, my fiance at the time. Mm -hmm. I remember we had gone into the church and I was like, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. So um, let's get a baptism. And when they were about to do the baptism, the lady that was about to like put me underwater, she's like, repeat after me. Jesus is God. And like, I just looked at her, I was like, God is God. And bro, she looked at me with like the dirtiest look, but she, no she had no way. choice. She had to put me in the water. <laughs> so you were like, nah, man, I can't, I can't accept this. I can't accept this. It's, nah, man, it's, it was silly. It was silly. <laughs> but yeah, man, I thought it was funny. Yo, that is funny. And she just had to dip your head in the water. <laughs> she had to. She had no choice. But she didn't want to. She really didn't want to. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that I can imagine the upset. Huh? <laughs> well, like, even that, even with the whole Christianity thing, man, it's, 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 it's amazing, man, how I'm saying you affirm God is all-powerful, all-knowledgeable, but then he's a human being who's not all-powerful, not all-knowledgeable. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make you know, sense. That's another thing What people need to understand Yeah Is you know Atheism Was A response to Um Sorry Yeah Atheism is a response to uh, uh Christianity Atheism was an attempt To try to Make sense Of The things that Christianity Was just basically Just Confusing people with regards to Like I can understand why uh, you would have um, uh, a, a, a bunch of people That just want to be faithless And not believe When you're telling When the only option to believe Is so inconsistent With reality Like you have a God Who is all knowledgeable But then he's a human and, and But then at the same time He tells you I don't know when the day of judgment is Like I think it was in the gospel of Mark or well, Matthew, one of the two, a man comes to Jesus and he says, you know, when is the hour? He said, no one knows. Not even the angels in the heavens, not even the son, except for the father. So how do you not know? <laughs> if you're God, yeah, if you are the father and the father is you, you know what I'm saying? If you are the father and the father is you, one in three, three and one, mm -hmm. just tap into your fatherness and tell us, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but... <laughs> It shows you're not all not, It's either Jesus is ignorant I'm not insulting Isa alayhi salam But I'm talking about them I'm talking about on, on their narrative Either you're claiming your God is ignorant Or he is lying Or he well withheld information Which would lead us to be misguided All of which are bad Or he's not God You know what I'm saying So I can understand when people are given a text like that They're like you know what Maybe it's all a lie you know what I'm saying? But you see, Islam never had these problems. These problems that the, the West had and Europe had. Islam never had these issues. Like, you know, even for example, um, you know, uh, secularism um, um, is a, and, and liberalism is a response to the oppression of the church throughout Christianity. You know, like they would gouge out, gouge, out, gouge out people's eyes and cut their tongues if they wanted to make scientific progress. But you didn't have... That being a, a problem in the Islamic world Like from the beginning Islam has encouraged scientific progress Science doesn't have all the answers though It goes in line with the Quran and Sunnah But scientific progress has always been encouraged And that's why you find that Some of the most prolific scientists That even a lot of the scientific method Benefits from today Those scientists were Muslim Like Ibn, Ibn, Ibn al-Haytham if I'm not mistaken Was the one who Actually in his book of optics He actually ironed out The very beginnings Of what the scientific method is today Which Francis Bacon then later on developed He actually, if I'm not mistaken I looked into this stuff almost a decade ago So I'm going in the back of memory So I might have got the references wrong But you know, someone can look it up and correct me if I'm wrong But I think Francis Bacon obviously He, 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 he took it from He took it from Ibn Haytham But then now people they, 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 they praise Francis Bacon But you know what I'm saying not the source where he took it from But the reason why they were able to benefit from the Muslims in this way Was because the Muslims were all about progress Because our religion doesn't limit progress As long as the progress doesn't become limiting 
How does it become limiting? Is when it goes against the text. Yeah, if it goes against the text, I mean, the, the text is my anchor. So everything, so for me to now, in the name of progress, throw the anchor of the ship, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm lost at sea. You know what I'm saying? So obviously, it can't go against the text. But as long as it don't go against the text, bro, it's, Islam's all about progress. So like, I feel like a lot of people, if they didn't come from this European, Western, Christian kind of narrative that they're so displeased with, and they looked at Islam without these Christian filters, they will see that Islam don't have the problems that they have. But the issue is that they come with these Christian filters and they try to find faults in Islam and superimpose it. And that's why maybe they, you know, you, you find what you look for, right? I'm saying if, if, I if I tell you, look around the room and look for something red, you might not have even noticed it. But suddenly when you look around, oh, wait, that's red. And that as well. And that as well. So I'm saying if you, if you look for bad, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna find, find a way to interpret something as bad, right? You know what I'm saying? That's how it's going to be. So be, man, it, it just makes sense. It makes sense, man, that that's why they do that. And if you look at Christianity and whole, like, it's all a contradiction. It's all a contradiction. All Christians, they contradict themselves. And I'm not saying it to talk bad. I'm saying it because it's what I saw. Really, and yeah. a, a, a real Christian will admit the contradictions, you know? And what's crazy is like, you have over here in the West, you know, I, I actually had a friend who came to me when I, I turned uh, a Muslim or, yeah. And he was like, oh, like, how can you be a part of that? That's Islam is not progressive. I'm like, in what sense? Like, what are you referring to? What is it not progressive in? He was, I think he was referring to like homosexuality, transgenderism, the gender whole thing where it's like, now you can be non-binary EQ, whatever that is. You know, not talking bad about anyone, but it's like, come on, man, that's that's confusion. That's confusion right there. Of course. Over here in the West, brother, over here in the West, you have like this pastor. He's um he's a from he's Christian, he's a pastor, and he does this TikTok where he has a uh, um like the the pride, kind of like the pride colors, like all the, the rainbow type thing yeah 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 yeah. and then he's doing it he's basically like saying that he accepts everyone that he accepts gay he expect he accepts um transgenders and all that stuff i'm like dude you're contradicting your own book yeah bro that's because that's not inconsistency with your book <laughs> yeah it just it doesn't make sense man yeah uh, old test old, te old testament we've got some tough stuff in there you know what i'm saying it's got some tough stuff so when I when you see Christians, they do the whole, um, for lack of a better term, you know, like the whole, you know, love, God is love thing. Well, you need to read your book, my G. That's what we say. You have to read your book. <laughs> There's some tough stuff in there. Yeah. Try to soften it up. There's some Christianity, in my opinion, Christianity is like the soft version of the Old Testament. Yeah, but you know, it makes no sense to me because. Bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, if, you, if a person wants to take the old, I mean, the Old Testament is why we had the Crusades. It's why we had the KKK. It's why it's why it's 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 why people justified taking African people as slaves. You know what I'm saying? Across the border and putting them in slavery. Like, that's it. Cause it's it's aggressive. It's war. You know what I'm saying? Like, so there's actually you could you could do quick Google search. You know, um, like for example. Uh, military verses in the Quran in comparison to military verses in 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 the Bible, mm -hmm. or, or you know what I'm saying, or or like alleged violence verses in the Quran, and I, I mean I say alleged violence, but obviously that viol violence is not all bad. Like for example, when you know when you slaughter an animal to eat it, that's violence. You know what I'm saying? When you defend someone who's weak, uh, you know physically, that's violence. But it is 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 good. Not all violence is bad. But I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So if you, if you look in the Quran, you're going to sign some verse about violence. But sometimes in order to save the oppressed or to remove oppression, a degree of violence needs to be manifested in order to be able to, you know, bring about the good. So I'm saying if you compare those verses, like the ones in the Quran that call to, you know, action compare, and compare, in comparison to Christianity, bro, Christianity is filled with violence, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's filled with violence, bro. It's, Serious, <laughs> but man, people, bro, people are always telling me like, ah, but Islam is not a peaceful religion. I'm like, nah, nah, you're mistaken. Islam 
is the most peaceful religion. And then on top of that, it's the real religion because in other religions, you have violence, right? Mm -hmm. But then in the religions, they're telling you, turn the cheek if you get hit. If someone hits you, turn the cheek. And then if they hit you again, turn the other cheek. They're basically telling you to be soft, to not do anything. Soft. But we live in a time where it's like, man, it's like you said, those kids on the block where it's like, if they go on another block, something's going to pop off. Something's going to happen. And, you know, we don't want that to happen. But if we live in a time where someone may do that, someone may try to take advantage of you, someone does not have the best intentions for you, we do not live in a perfect world. The only perfect mm -hmm. one is Allah. Then it would make sense. All right. Yes, it is best to forgive. And it says that in the Quran. But if someone's transgressing by all bounds, like, all right, do you like defend yourself, do what you have to do. And that's and, real, bro. That's I, 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 and that's the thing about the Quran is that it just it deals with the reality of the problems in which we're faced. Now, for example, like, you know, like, 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 like you know, this whole concept of, you know, pacifism. I'm saying pacifism sounds beautiful if you were living in a world that was free from oppression. But there are people out there that are gonna try and take yours, and they're gonna try and kill you, and they're gonna um, and they, and just look at the world in which we live in, bro. There's violence everywhere. So I can now not stand in front of people. Like I'm saying, imagine there's a nation all pointing their guns at you. They're about to rape your women, take your kids, do whatever. Like, bro, you're gonna go to. You know I'm saying, Islam tells you, okay, now, yeah, khudul You know what I'm saying? Take your precautions. You have to get ready for battle now. You know what I'm saying? Like, but but the thing is, for you to now look down, I'm saying every country has that understanding. That's why you have militaries. That's why you have military law. You know what I'm saying? But now to look down on Islam because it wants to deal with the world in a pra in, in in a real life way. Like another example is, you know, the whole issue of polygamy. You know, in Islam, um, although some people take the view that it's recommended, I don't take the view as recommended. The view of the scholars who mentioned that it's permissible over recommended is the view that I'm more inclined with. Um, but it's permissible Now one will say But bro that doesn't sound nice And I'm saying bro You can say whatever you want But that's the reality Of the world we live in Now for example What do you do in countries Where you got more women than men If every one man Was to get married to the woman There are going to be Hundreds of thousands of women That are unmarried So that woman now If that's your sister She's either got the option Of becoming another man's wife Where she gets to be honoured And respected Or she's going to become Another man's mistress Somebody he just goes every night when he gets away from his wife, just for a beauty call, and that's it. So what would you if if your sister was in that situation, she needed love, she needed companionship, she needed relationship. You know what I'm saying? And all the women and men have been matched up, and she's left over. Now she's from the hundred thousand or so women in your state that's left over. You know what I'm saying? What do you do? You'd rather her become another man's wife. You know what I'm saying? So what they want to do is they want to say, no, you know what? We'll call it open relationship. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, 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 it's the same thing. What's open relationship? One guy sleeps with as many women as he wants and another woman sleeps with as many guys as they want. It's an open relationship. I'm saying, how's that? I'm saying, so, so what's your beef with polygamy then? You know what I'm saying? I, we, I here it's civilized, it's honored, it's respectable, it's noble. She's got rights, she gets taken care of. That you know what I'm saying? So, but what people don't want to accept, like you had to go to open relationships because you saw that the reality of the world was like that. You know what I'm saying? But Islam only really wants to deal with solutions from the creator of the universe towards these real life problems that you have. You want to say, oh, it's misogyny. So yeah, it's long. <laughs> Yeah, man, and they, they want to talk down on it, but it's like it even says that you should marry one if you can't deal with all four oh, yeah. and Jesse. And you know, that's the only religion that says that. That's the only religion that says that. Yeah. Only if you look at the Bible and you look at the Torah, and you look at the Hindu scriptures, the only book that actually narrows it down and says marry only one if you can't do justice, marry only one is Islam. That's the only one. You know what I'm saying? Like even it shocked me. You know, there's a, there's the, 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 the fourth surah of the Quran is called the chapter of women. Surah to Nisa, the chapter of women. And it's shocking to me because this surah, the way it starts off is profound. Like, you know, if you look historically speaking, women never had rights. Women never had rights. Even if you look in the West up until about a hundred and so years ago, 150 years ago, they never had the right to even inherit or own property. They, then af shortly after that, they got the right to vote. So, Imagine, forget voting, women couldn't even own property. 
they couldn't say this is mine. Rather, they were owned. They were themselves property. So there's a verse in the Quran, in Surah Tini says it's profound because Allah He starts off by telling you about His rights. Allah said, Ya ayyuhan nas, ittaqu rabbakum. You have to fear your Lord and be dutiful to Him and be conscious of Him. Why? Because in this surah, Allah is about to tell you the rights of your family members, your wife, your relatives, the orphan, the poor. He's about to go in. But the thing is that all of that, remember we talked about morality earlier. If it's survival of the fittest, you're not going to care about wives. You're going to just play women, cheat women. You're going to not really care about the orphans. You're not going to care about your relatives. It's going to be all on you. But when, 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 you're, when your morality is anchored, with a higher being, i.e. Allah, and based on him now saying, look, if you want to fulfill my right, you've got to fulfill the right of your wife. You want to fulfill my right, you've got to fulfill the right of your relatives. Then that's going to now lead you to fulfilling the rights of your relatives. So first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off with his right. Then immediately after, you know what shocked me? After mentioning himself, you know what was the first group of people that Allah talked about? It shocked me. The orphans. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Allah said, وَآتُوا الْيَتَامَى And I'm saying, people don't know Islam. Like look at the order is the, the fourth surah in the Quran is is if I'm not mistaken the second biggest surah in the whole Quran. Okay, Surah Al Baqarah, then I think Surah Nisa. So it's 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 a it's a huge portion of the Quran. And look at the order of like like people 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 really don't understand Islam. I mean the first thing is the right of Allah. Worship him alone. Don't worship no one else besides him. That's the first place where you're going wrong. You're not giving Allah his right. You're worshipping either your desires or an idol or a man or you're not even, you don't even believe he exists. That's the first thing you need to get right is come right with Allah. Okay, now that you got that, what's the next thing? Allah mentioned the orphans. Give the orphans their wealth. Don't, 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 don't steal their wealth from them. If their father left behind inheritance for them, don't cheat their inheritance out of them. So the orphan. Because Islam comes to the defense of the defenseless. And then right after that, Allah mentioned the women. Why? Because after the, the, the orphans are the most vulnerable in society. After that, the most vulnerable in society were women. So Allah said, فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَعَ Marry women that you like, that are pleasing to you. Two, three, or four. But if you can't do justice, marry only one. Marry one. So straight after that, the right of the woman. So now, now straight away, what people don't realize is that women, that, that the verse is actually teaching you, because you have to look at the time the verse came down. It came down, I'm saying in the 11, 12, 1300s, the Christ, Christians were still debating, is the woman even a human being? Does she have a soul? In France, the archbishops, they got together, they had a big debate. Does she even have a soul? Is she a human? Is she our species? They didn't even know that. But look, in the Quran, 700 years before that, Allah sent down a verse saying, be just to women. Just be just to them. Women, you have to give be justice to them, just to them. And if you can't do justice to them, you can't you can only marry one. You know what I'm saying? You can't even be just to that one. You that's it. You you can't even you shouldn't even be married to her. And then the next verse, Allah said, you know, uh, give the women their wealth. You know it's powerful because Allah referred to the wealth of the women, Saduqati Hinna. He referred to it as their wealth. You know what that's shocking? Is because this verse was the first time in this history from Islam and taking into account this history of you know the West and Renaissance period and all this kind of stuff. Out of all of these histories, the first time, starting from Islam up until now, our, our day now, the first time in our history, starting from Islam, where women actually had the right to own anything. That this was called their property. Allah said, give them their wealth. As in it's theirs, it's not yours. It's their wealth. It's their wealth. So um, these are things that we take for granted, but you don't understand like Islam pioneered women's rights. You know what I'm saying? Like women don't have to go to feminism for their rights. Islam has their rights for them. You know what I'm saying? So you know feminism when it came, it was a, it was a response to Christianity because Christianity was oppressing the women. That's where the oppression was. You know what I'm saying? And then when you look after it, bro, just just the way that you know Allah he talks about the women, like like people used to inherit women, bro. Like a, a man would die and his wife would be inherited by a son. You know what I'm saying, bro? That's the that's the world we, we we lived in, bro. But like Islam came to 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 like is as it to it, it's these are real life problems. Islam's giving the solution, but the thing is they don't want it. That's the issue. They don't want it. Yeah, subhanAllah, man. Feminism is is cancer, bro. And you know how I said that atheist is like that kid who found out that Santa Claus isn't real and he's mad. Yeah. Yeah, feminism is like that little girl throwing a tantrum because she wants to do whatever she wants, but 
her dad's not letting her. He's not letting her. That's what it is. You want to do what you want there. That's literally, you You hit the nail on the head. You hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what it is. Atheists, it's just, just, they're going to get offended this. But it's like the little girl <laughs> for a tantrum because dad said, no, <laughs> no sweets for you today. <laughs> Bro, but if you look at, if you look at feminism, and then you actually look at real Muslim women. Like, bro, real Muslim women are, bro, they are happy. They are free. They feel spiritually at peace with their way of life and the Quran and what's in there. But then you see a feminist and they are not at peace. They are hedonistic. And they are always either angry or miserable or complaining or triggered about something, bro. You know, you know what's shocking, yeah, is I was looking for a, a title for a video um, in which I discussed feminism um, a while ago, and I was trying to find, like, you know, sometimes you have a creative block, so I just typed into Google, I typed in feminist quotes, so that I could try and maybe like play, have a like play off the words, and I I came across like 150 quotes. You know what's shocking to me is how many of these quotes were to do with vaginas. As in, in their slogans, feminist slogans, sorry. It's all about vagina, 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 vagina. You know what I'm saying? And and, and they say it in a crude way. Like, like they all say the P word. You know what I'm saying? P-U-S-S-Y. So my thing is like, even in your quest to try to liberate yourself, you define yourself many a time by your physical components. So where's the liberation in that? Where's There's the liberty? No. There's no. You know what I'm saying? Like you're telling me you're as in uh, uh, female liberty manifest in its most prolific form by you stripping your clothes off you. Wow, <laughs> that's what you wanted. <laughs> Is that what you wanted? You should have just said so. I want to. I want to take my clothes off. <laughs> like this, that. That for you is your manifestation of liberty. I own my body, so let me just strip naked. Or, or let me just be as provocative in my dress as possible. Of course, I don't know all feminist movements are like that, but that's a, that's one of the primary feminist mov movements that we see today. I'm not really that's what like you you don't realize that that you know in 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 that um in that attempt to be free, you actually trapped yourself because you because you you you're still defining yourself by the very thing that what men ultimately they kind of have a monopoly over. Which is, like, and I'll give you an example. Like now, when you want to go get a job, I don't know what it's like in the States, but here in retail, bro, they look at the way you look. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah, you could, you, you, you could have a, you could have an amazing, uh, I think you guys call it grade point average, right? You could have an amazing, you know, like grades here. But bro, if you've got the right waist and the right bust, you're going to get the job over the girl who perhaps doesn't, even though she might be more qualified for the job than you. You know what I'm saying? So like I'm saying, what they don't look and 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 she's there, feminist. Forgive me, but this is she. She might be like a bimbo, but fe she's so proud. I'm feminist. Look at me, but like my girl, like you only got the job because you're still being objectified. You know what I'm saying? You don't realize you're still trapped, and men still have control over that. You know what I'm saying? Like men are still they still in control. Like so, just be you, man. <laughs> yeah, man. It's. It's silly, bro. The whole feminist thing is silly. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. Listen, bro. I know I took a lot of your time, man. Forgive me. I've, 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 uh, I went on as well, man. Enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Listen, I wanted to, um, I wanted to say something to you, um, inshallah. You know, I, I got, I got, um, uh, you, you know what Umrah is, right? When you go Umrah to Mecca, Medina. Well, it's primarily to Mecca. Pilgrimage is the Hajj. Yeah, there's the Hajj, which is the big pilgrimage, and Umrah is a smaller one. So I got Umrah uh, uh, tour that I do. I, I go, well, before the Corona thing, we used to go three times a year, and we take 50 guys of us. So like, I wanted to, you know, since you come to Islam as a gift, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to gift you an all-expenses-paid trip, man, in terms of covering your flight, accommodation, five stars, or everything. Yeah, for real, man. You're going to be with us, inshallah. Um, so I don't know when we're going to go next. We're just waiting. You know, the Corona thing has got it all in the air, but... But soon as um, soon as we know, we're probably gonna be going maybe summertime this year. I'm saying we'd love for you to uh, accept our gift, man, and 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 roll with us, inshallah. Oh, that's that's so generous, man. Yeah, it's nice, my bro.
it's not it's the least we could do man i i'm sorry dude. i just i don't really know how to react but of course bro i would definitely go amazing amazing yeah man no bro you you you're going to love it alhamdulillah because we 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 set it up where we go with people that are like minded people people who come from similar backgrounds similar journeys similar struggles you know what i'm saying and we all come to you know what i'm saying this uh I'll send. I'll, I'm. I'm. If if you're if you're okay, I'm gonna get your number from my colleague, so we connected directly, inshallah. And I'll send you some videos of some of the previous trips we've done. But you're gonna have an amazing time. It's gonna be transforming, inshallah, life changing. Damn, inshallah. Damn, Damn dude, love I'm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I I don't know how to react to it, bro. Bro, it's like, cool, man. Your that's face amazing. Is cool. Subhanallah, man. man. The, the only reaction we need from you just to come. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? There's no strings attached. You don't have to promote nothing. It's just it's a gift. You know what I'm saying? It's purely just a gift. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem, my bro. No problem, no problem. We actually got um, quite a few uh, reverts, inshallah, coming on this next trip. We is, is, we're going to have quite a few reverts. So, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have people that are in the same race as you. You know what I'm saying? So can you can you tell me what the pilgrimage is about? Because I haven't, yeah, sure. I haven't gotten to that part actually. Sure, sure, sure. So, so basically, Islam has five pillars. Um, it, um, the first pillar is to worship Allah alone, i.e., the Shahada, to testify that you worship Allah alone, and to follow His uh, Messenger in His teachings and His traditions. Peace be upon Him. Then the second pillar is the prayer. The third pillar is the charity, the zakat that we give. The fourth pillar is the fasting. Now, the Hajj, it combines all of them. The reason why Hajj is great is because it combines all the previous pillars. I.e., fasting is a pillar that is you're worshipping Allah through your body. Right? Uh, the charity, you're worshipping Allah through your wealth. In the prayer, you're worshipping Allah through the body, but it's also a manifestation of the shahada, i.e., the creed. To worship Allah alone, no one else but Him. Humility, putting your head on the ground, you know, declaring Allah to be the most supreme and most high. So these are these are these are all pillars, and they all have a part of it. But in the Hajj, it combines the spirit of all of these pillars in this one journey. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it's, and it's, and it's different rituals. The same way in the prayer, there's different rituals. There's the standing, then there's the bowing, then there's the prostration. So there's different pillars. It has it has, it has different rituals in it. So for example, it's coming there, it's coming to the Kaaba, it's going between the two mountains. Um, there's the um, there's going to the plain of Arafah, which is the pl the plain uh, where you know that's where your du'a is accepted, and that's the main part of Hajj. Just, you're there, everyone's there. You got like you know a million people that just like you. Some of them are rich, some are poor, some are royalty, some are some are paupers in the street, but everyone's dressed in the same clothes, and they're just begging Allah. And you know that's the day when. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him He taught That that's the, the day When Allah's mercy Is the greatest Like that day Allah He frees more people's neck From the hellfire And he forgives more people Than any other day You know what I'm saying He said that's, that, that's the day of forgiveness Basically And that's on the ninth day of Hajj That's that's the day when you're, That's like the main day of Hajj That's the main event As they say You know You're out there on the plane and Just begging Allah Saying Allah forgive me And that's And, and that's that's it, man. That's the day Shaitan he screams, he's upset because, because of how much Allah's mercy is that day. So many people are trying to misguide, but on that one day, Allah just forgives them. So, so that's what it is. That's beautiful. Yeah. So obviously that's the Hajj, but the Umrah is the lesser one. Is the lesser one. The Hajj is a bit longer. Umrah is lesser. Umrah can be done in a day, but we go there for ten days, so you can just enjoy the whole vibes. Hajj is a bit more longer. Uh, that happens once a year And uh, we, we we don't do that Because there's a lot more to it In terms of organization and preparation To take people on that kind of a spiritual journey You need to have a lot more Kind of, you know like You want to you make sure you, you deliver But for, for, for the Umrah That's something that's easy And we, we just out there We go to Medina first Then we go to Mecca You're going to have a good time, bro You're going to love it Inshallah Inshallah, man You're going to love it, man, love it, man. You're going to love it, man it's, I see, I see, I see, I see I see the podcast with your brothers, man. I think one of them is called Fa Fayed, Fayed, right? Uh, and the other one, what was his name? Rami. Huh? Rami. Rami. Yeah, I like them. I can't lie. I see. Yeah, I see. I see a bit of it. I like. I like the energy, mashallah. I'm trying to get you guys to come to the UK. 
so we can all vibe out here. <laughs> Bro, that would be incredible, man. I'm listen. I'm I'm free. I'm free. I the only thing holding me back is COVID. Yeah. So, what 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 state are you in? I'm in Florida right now. Okay, you're in Florida. Yeah, and bro, it's it's terrible here because like in Florida, the the governor, I think it's the governor, forgive me if I'm wrong, but he basically said like, ah, no, we don't really have to do lockdown too much. So we did it very, very loose. And then bro, now. <laughs> now you got, we got the, one of the countries with the highest COVID uh, numbers. No way. Yeah, man. So it's like you can't you can't do much. You can't do much. I'm saying so. Just wait, maybe wait out a couple months, bro. We're trying to get you in the UK, inshallah. You know what I'm saying that you see that I I I've been I've been to America quite a lot, and alhamdulillah, there's strong Muslim community there. But the energy, the way it is in the UK, second to none, bro. You're gonna see the brothers come out full force. You know what I'm saying? That's amazing, man. That's amazing. I, bro, I was already planning on going overseas, so I'm gonna be and I'm gonna be definitely near UK, anyways. Okay, amazing, amazing. You just get, let us know, bro. If anything, we even fly you over, man. You know what I'm saying? Wherever you are, just bring you bring you over. Alhamdulillah, man. My bro. <laughs> yes. Sir. Well, actually, it's, 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 it's been an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you so much for for giving us this time, man. Inshallah, hopefully we can we could do something like this in the future. But we're gonna definitely, definitely stay in touch, and hopefully, man, people got to benefit from this discussion. You know, what I'm saying you definitely brought some wisdom to the table. I can't lie, and I really appreciate you being open with your experiences for others to learn, man. Very grateful right now. Well, thank you for having me. I didn't, I didn't expect to talk with you guys, with you specifically, because bro, I actually saw some of your videos before. I actually came out and told people that oh, I man. was Muslim. So it's an honor for me to be here. The honor is mine, trust me, to see, you know, brother, passionate about the deen, you know what I'm saying, like you, bro. I'm, I'm jealous of you, bro, in a good way. You know what I'm saying? Because the moment you become Muslim, all your sins have been deleted. You're like a, you know, like a sin that's like a newborn baby. But me, my, my plate is heavy with sins, unfortunately. You know what I'm saying? So if anything, I look up to you. You know what I'm saying? Nah, man, bro, may Allah bless him and forgive us all, bro. And I may I may have been like supposedly from what you would said that reverts the sins are wiped clean. But man, I have I have tattoos and they just remind me. They remind me of what I've been through. And you know, I know that Allah yeah. forgives and Allah is merciful, but it's there. You know, I see it every day. So like I, I know where I was. And it, it humbles me, I should say that. That's 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 very important. As long as as long as you know you we we know we only came to this goodness from Allah and He could take us out of it. You know what I'm saying? If we're not grateful, that's good. That's good. But definitely, yeah, definitely, you can you can you can you can rest assured that whatever's past tattoos or whatever has been forgiven, inshallah. You know what I'm saying? Fresh. Inshallah, man. Because I I've been a little hesitant on going to a mosque because I have tattoos and some of them can't be covered, and you know like. I guess it's the little kid inside of me that that yeah. wants to that wants to like be in that community and doesn't want to be shunned away. You know what I mean? You know what, bro? Um, like I said, I can't speak for the US, but in the UK, like I'm saying, we got people with tattoos in and out of the mosque because it's like I'm I'm not even reverse. I'm talking about born Muslims. You know what I'm saying? Some of them just not even practicing the deen. So. Uh, I, don't, I can imagine maybe the odd, you know, ignorant cultural back home uncle in the corner of the masjid might feel a certain type of way, but I don't think anyone's going to shun you away. And if they did, I'll personally have to come over to America, man. And I have to shout my, I have to shout my homies in the States, wherever they be, I say, yo, we have to come check these people, man. You know what I'm saying? They can't be behaving like that. They can't be behaving like that. I don't think anyone's going to violate you like that. I don't, I don't, I, I can't, if anything, I can imagine if anyone did try to shun you away, bro, brothers would probably put them in their place because them, you know what I'm saying? We, 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 we all got skeletons in our closet. You know what I'm saying? All of us, all of us, all of us. So I don't, don't, don't feel any type of way, man. Maybe link up with the brothers, fired and the man there and just say, yo, take me to the mosque. They're you know in saying? Canada, man. Oh, they're not even in, in the, in the US. Nah, huh? they're in Toronto and I'm over okay. here in the US. Crazy. Now I'm saying, you know what? I'm gonna try to find you some guys from um, from Florida to connect with. Then how's that sound? 
Inshallah. Yeah? Okay, because uh, when, when this video goes out, I'm sure some people are going to message. So if they email me in at session at gmail.com, we have to vet them out, make sure they're not no weirdos. You know what I'm saying? And if they're straight, I'll put you in touch with them, man, or at your own pace. You know what I'm saying? Just link up with some brothers. All right. I appreciate that. Yeah? I appreciate that. Yeah. My bro. Listen, thank you so much, man. It was an honor speaking to you. I feel so privileged right now. Thank you so much, man. I uh, wish we could carry on, but I just got another engagement. But I'm, I'm, I feel so fulfilled uh, with having this conversation. It was a very wholesome conversation. Yeah, same here, man. <laughs> my brother, so you take care of so I'm going to get your number from my brother, inshallah. We stay in touch via WhatsApp. Hi, brother. My brother, listen, take care of yourself. Salam alaikum. Take care. Wa alaikum salam. We want many things in life. But one thing that summarizes all that we want is we want good. We want goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran how we can all acquire goodness. Primarily in the next life, which is what really counts, right? Because what point is there if you had so much good in this world, but in the next life, you are a loser? In Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرِّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you will never, you will not reach goodness. You will never acquire it. Until you spend for the sake of Allah out of that which you love. When this ayah came down, there was a companion of the Prophet ﷺ who owned a beautiful garden. And it was very beloved to this companion. The moment he heard this ayah, he wanted to implement it straight away. Because although he had a beautiful, lovely garden, he knew that there was a greater good, which was the garden in the next life, the garden of Jannah that he wants. So he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he gave it in the cause of Allah. Like if you deep it for a second, when you love something, you spend money on it. You love your children, you spend money on your children. You love yourself, you spend money on yourself. But you're supposed to love Allah and Islam more than all of these things. How much have you spent in Allah's cause? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had companions there that were willing at the drop of a hat to fund whatever cause it was that was needed to be funded for the sake of Allah. And we today, in similar fashion, are reaching out to you. If we can get a hundred people to give 50 pounds at the link below, you can help us in getting closer to our next target. And if you can't give 50, give 50p. Remember what the, Allah said in the ayah, وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ Whatever you give from good, Allah knows. You may give 50 pounds, you, you may give 50p, you may give 5p. But that could be the reason for you to enter paradise. With that said, please click the link below. And we're going to carry on doing what we do. But we need you, with Allah's permission, to do what you need to do. And that's to support the cause of Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.